Hello there and welcome back to another episode of Oxygen Not Included. Now in the previous episode we managed to complete our ranches over here and right now we have about four hatches oh there's a stone hatchling egg fantastic about time we get one of those and we have another eight eggs up there now in today's episode we are planning to get into draco farming and those farms are most likely going to be here we'll have two types of different farms so the first one will be the usual Dracos, which will give us some uh, fibers what were they called again they were called the reed fibers and these are useful, for example, for the Atmos suit and also some snazzy suits to make them a little bit happier. Now, they're also great because we will get some eggshells, which then will be used for our steel production. It's not going to be a lot, but every little helps. And then uh, finally, we'll get some meat out of them as well to produce some barbecue in the future. Now, the other Dracos that we currently don't have on our map, at least I haven't seen them, are the glossy Dracos. And the glossy Dracos are actually great because after sharing them, We'll get some plastic as well, and plastic is going to be very handy. It will pull, uh, pull up the research table here, and we scroll down. Where are they again? Ah, here. Transit tubes. So that helps our tubes to travel around the map much faster than them just running around. But plastic is also very handy because we can melt it and turn it into naphtha, which is quite good, in my opinion, for the early game liquid locks. So let's get it started. Whilst we are going for the for the Dracos, I just wanted to have a quick uh, shout out because Eugene made a good comment in episode 2 that for the tubes, they only need two slots for the sleep time. So I have adjusted this and we've also added an extra downtime. So just to make sure that they get back to base get some food toilet break and then they have enough time to sleep so thank you very much for uh, eugene for that so again whilst we are doing the trekos we're also starting to climb up a little bit because we do have those two geysers here the cool slash geyser which gives us polluted water and we also have a cool salt slash geyser which gives us brine and they're both at minus 10 degrees so that's gonna be fantastic to cool the base and keep everything uh, nice and nice and warm eventually right so what i'm doing here right now i have created a bit of a liquid lock and actually let's put this tile here instead and then up here will be we'll let all the hydrogen gather up in here and that's going to help us hopefully to create those glossy tracklets now just above we are starting to create a bit of a tank for all this polluted water because right now I'm pretty sure it's overpressurized and it's not going to spit out any more polluted water for us. But we don't want it to stop. Yep, rising pressure and it might spit out a little bit. But most likely, yep, overpressured and actually never mind. We are getting a little bit of polluted water it seems. But we're just going to open this up, let it, uh, let this tank fill up as much as we can. And we'll use it in the, in the future. A few cycles later and we have the tank pretty much complete now. All we got to do is let's empty, let's empty all this water out. And we'll also block this as well and try and push all this water upwards a little bit. Well, essentially fill up this, this little pool. And then once we've done it, we can climb down. And we'll most likely use the pumps to drop this water in in here as well so we can clear this area up and use it as we'd like to now yeah it did take us a few cycles but we're also gonna tidy or clear up as many resources as we can because once this pressure builds up here quite a bit then um, it's gonna be slightly more difficult to get in here we could always actually come around and one thing i forgot to mention is we're using airflow tiles because these are pretty much the i believe the only tiles well the tiles that we have access to right now that are not gonna break under the pressure that's gonna build up inside this tank uh, right so this level is done let's put another layer in and try and squeeze all that water into into this tank uh, in the Draco development not too much has been done although we're yeah we're going nice and nice and slowly here we're gonna fill up a little bit of oxygen just for the time being then we'll close it up and make sure that they can only access through the liquid lock because i don't want any of that hydrogen to escape elsewhere on the map i'd like to keep it inside here how much hydrogen do we have we have oh quite a bit okay the rest seems pressured pretty well as well and there's a little bit even here actually that we can redirect towards us yep that's gonna be good before we do that though I'd like to get the ceiling in place and I can't get it fully in place I think unless we empty this pool actually no we can do it if we go from somewhere here yep that should be fine and then we can bring the stairs down from here so 
this should actually work. We'll put a bit of a lip in here, so hopefully most of the hydrogen stays in there. Actually, we can have a bit of a step up from here, so that could work as well. Yep, we'll do that and we'll let them finish as much as we can. How is the water doing? Okay, not bad. So let's keep uh, squeezing it towards the tank there. And as soon as that is complete and we can close this up, then then we'll open up the rest of it as well and have actually a couple more ladders in here. And yeah, then we can go and analyze it. All right, other than that, we do have a few more. Ooh, actually, there's quite a few now. Uh, let's try and wrangle them. How many are there? Three in total. Okay. Do we have a rancher as well? Yes, we did. Rowan. Farming, ranching. Yes, it's max level. Okay. For the time being, let's lower it down so we can focus on capturing all these hatchlings. And then this one, yeah, this ranch should be full. And then as soon as we get a stone one, how far are you? Incubation at 37%. Okay. So that should be fine. Oh, actually, we do have a sage hatchling and we don't really need in the farms. Yeah, we're gonna keep the normal hatches. Okay, so we do have one more place. Oh, that's another stone egg. That is fantastic. We'll get you out of here as well. I wish we had mechatronics engineering so we could automate this whole process in here. But I think in the in the last episode when we built this as well, the, the idea behind this design is two things. To limit the movement of uh, hatchlings, but also keep everything that we need to supply very close to our core. So the duplicates don't have to run all the way there. I know right now they still have to because we have the the meal meal lice growing here. But once we get rid of this, then they all they only have to come this far. Okay, let's go and take a look how are things going here. Okay, slow and steady wins the race. Just a couple more tiles, and it seems to be pretty clear now as well, which is actually quite nice. Now down here, Marie is still busy climbing away, but it is a vacuum, so yeah, sorry Marie. Guess what we could do is let's um, put the roof in place, and then we can probably let let in some oxygen as well. I know it might seem a little odd, why do we have this liquid lock in here if we're gonna let this oxygen and hydrogen go in there anyways? I think for the time being, we'll be able to have it constructed in no time. Their skills, if you look at Frankie for example, uh, sorry, let's just go through here. Skills, excavation, construction, fire. So we'll get it built fairly quickly. And then, yeah, we'll have a um, few ladders go through. I think about here should be fine. And then we can block this off as well. How much oxygen do we have? That should last us a few turns. We could actually build the third level already as well. So if we go from about here. Yep, that should be it. And then we'll also build the granite floors across like so and I'd actually like you to mop up this extra water that we have on the floor as well. I think it was a bit of a leftover from some of those pools we had there earlier. Okay a few more roof bits to put in and we're nearly there. Is this done? Yes we can do a couple more walls in here but what I'm gonna do now is I'll try and finish this off there and once we're ready to go and analyze this we'll be back. Actually let's have a quick look at what sort of new printables do we have? Anyone with mechatronics? No. Ranching, decorating, operating. Food is okay right now. Uh, but I'd... Mm, tough choice. Operating and ranching could be useful. And he's a night owl. Uh, let me think for a second. Okay, we're sold. Harold will be joining our colony and the reason for that is we can always use more ranchers, especially if we're gonna have, I think, about three hatch farms and then also about four treco farms. And then, yeah, he's definitely gonna be very useful since we only have one right now. But also with operating, that means he could eventually become a mechatronics engineer. So, yeah, let's welcome Harold to the colony. We'll get him a bed real quick as well and a mess table. When it comes to the schedule, let's have a look. We've got three in the first one. So Harold, maybe maybe you move on to the third schedule. Where are you? Actually, Harold likes working at night. Oh yeah, that's perfect. He's now working at night. Fantastic. And he gets three attribute to all attributes. Okay, that's actually pretty good. When it comes to priorities, uh, right now you could help us with what farming and ranching could be great, but also... 
just to tidy up ourselves a little bit. But I think these should be the top. Let's do it this way because he's not going to be able to uh, do ranching right away anyway. So Harold, where are you? We'll give you... Let's give you farming. Oh, and we forgot to give you a hat as well. There we go. Now it's complete. The tank is now pretty much complete. So we are just going to dig out the last abyssalite tiles over here. And uh, once the last one is done as well, all that water should be dropping down, filling up... Uh, this tank here we go nice little waterfall and then we'll try and get this analyzed asap as well oh we don't really have a research right now let's see what can we assign next uh yep let's go uh, we'll just keep going down the list okay now how much more oh we may might have to move this up a little bit actually yep let's uh let's do that for sure because once it starts is it oh it's dormant right now so we'll see how good it is once we've analyzed it as well which bubbles should go and hopefully do that oh what is going on here that's a lot of polluted oxygen something is going crazy yeah the pressure is rising rather quickly let's see are we overcrowded no we're not well i guess more oxygen for the rest of the base yeah that's a little too much though let's see if we can mop this up and then what we'll also might do is maybe we'll just no we need to drop our co2 over there uh okay we'll see how it goes let's have a look at this so uh, we've pretty much mined out most of it now we just have to do the floor as well that's the last bit in here and then once that is done, actually, we can do this already. Let's batch you up and then we'll do the same. Put some ladders in. We'll close it up and uh, that should be pretty much it then. The uh, Draco farming area or ranching area is finally complete. So now we can let all that hydrogen and I guess the chlorine in here as well. So let's just quickly mine this out will give you the highest of priorities. And here we here we go. Let's try and mine this up as well. Okay, another research is done. That's going very quickly. So we'll queue up a second one. And actually with the Dracos as well, let's get this door. Oh, wait, we do have a door in here, so that's fine. And here we go. Now this room is filled with chlorine, which we don't want here. But not to worry, as soon as we open up this hydrogen bit in here. You know what? Let's put a ladder in here as well. Let some oxygen in there. We'll give you the highest priority. I'd like the hydrogen to go up first. Okay, just one more bit in here. And there we go. Okay, it should be flowing all up now because it is much lighter than chlorine. And then once we let the oxygen in there as well, our tubes can now go and breathe underneath. Okay, well great. Now the time should be to try and put in some sort of a blueprint in here. There are going to be a couple of stages for this. The initial one will be very, very simple and basic. We just want to turn them into into glossy uh, Dracos. And once we do have a few more resources, especially with uh, refined metal, then we'll put in some automation as well where we can automatically top up uh, the Draco farms, unlike what we're doing in here. And here we're just going to have the eggs being remo removed and... And I guess, uh, yeah, we'll use incubators to try and control this a little bit. So give me a little bit of time. I'll put in the blueprint, finish off the floors, and then we'll be right back. All right, here we go. The whole area is mined out and we got a very simple blueprint in. Now what we're going to do is we uh, shall put the farm tiles in the bottom over here. And you might think, well, hold up. Millwood can't grow in the in the chlorine over here. And yeah, you're, you're right. That's why we've left some airflow tiles in here and as soon as we have wrangled up a couple of these trecos we'll let the oxygen in actually we could do it straight away let's just put in a couple of airflow tiles and then hopefully the oxygen is going to push all that chlorine downwards because we're not going to need chlorine in, in any of this here anyways and yeah once that's uh, done we'll cover it up and then we'll have it well we'll have all the chlorine nicely boxed away waiting for us later once we have some glossy dracos already and we're gonna start uh, separating them if you could please have this drop off and great let's do all these dracos we'll put seven auto wrangle and we'll put seven in here as well yo here's some oxygen flowing Ooh. Let's, hmm, this might be flowing out, actually. You know what? Get this tile built, please. And hopefully that's gonna stop the chlorine from escaping from here. Because I would like to just 
push it all down towards here rather than letting it ex escape. It's a little bit caught out, but that's okay. I think most of it should now compress into this zone. It's gonna take a little bit of time. And that's okay, as long as we can get most of it down there. We still have a bit in here for the later Treco farm. Bit of a backup stock, let's let's call it that. But it would be nice if we can already have some some of it ready here before we even build this room. And yeah, the um, the room itself is very straightforward. How come no one's deconstructed it yet? It's uh, simple, nothing fancy, just a. Uh, Hydrogen at the top, oxygen hopefully, or CO2 at the bottom. And then all we need is some mealwood plants now as well. So we'll put a couple in here. And uh, hopefully that's going to keep our trekos alive for a little bit. I believe for 7 trekos we might need about anything between 10 to 12 planter boxes. But we've got, what is it, 7 here. So we might do a couple of individual farms with slightly less trekos. And yeah, that's how we're gonna go. So how we get those, let's take a quick look, those glossy treco trekos is very, very simple. All we gotta do is feed them some mealwood and then their chances of dropping a glossy treklet egg will, will go up a little bit. Well, and also to keep them, I think we have to keep them in hydrogen as well. Although I can't quite remember 100%. It was either, um, I think mealwood was the main thing. And uh, hydrogen potentially. But I have a feeling hydrogen might have been necessary just to grow their grow their scales once we get the glossy ones. Well, I guess we'll see. I'm sure we'll be able to have a few of them in here. So let's also get these planter boxes done. And uh, how much... Chlorine do we still have here? Quite a bit. Oh, it's taking quite some time to force it all the way there. How's it doing here? We are still producing quite a bit of oxygen. And I think it's being, yep, it's being pushed into towards this area. And it's slowly but surely going down. Maybe we'll help it out a little bit. But whilst we wait for that, let's see if we can put a few mealwood plants in as well. So as soon as we get rid of that chlorine, then we'll uh, should be able to plant them. It's all stockpiling at the back here as well. Let's see up here. Hydrogen is pretty good. It's staying up there. Let's give it a bit of, bit of time and let it equalize and we'll be back as soon as it's done as well. Okay, so what we're deciding to do is because it's taking quite some time, a little bit too long for my liking, we are going to help it out a little bit. And what I mean is we're going to dig a bit of a bigger pit in here. So hopefully more oxygen can flow in. Therefore, more hydrogen, not hydrogen, chlorine will be pushed down towards here. So, yeah, let's create this little bit for all that. We've got a little bit more in here. And let's take a look now. Okay, much better. We've got a few plants in as well, I believe. Mealwood is growing, and yeah, even though there's chlorine... Oh no, it's complaining about the body temperature. Ooh, that is very toasty. What we could do, though, is bring some of that nice cold liquid, rotate it around here, and just to help us out a little bit. That is definitely something I think we're gonna have to do, but I'd also like to just put some insulated tiles around this area to help it along. Oh, there's gonna be even more chlorine here. Okay, well, let me just try and uh, fix this up real quick and then we'll be back. All right, I think we're at a stage where it is now safe to seal it up. So we'll just cover it up as quick as we can. But what I'd like to, because the temperatures are so high down here, what I'd like to also do is to ensure that we put those insulated tiles just beneath all that. So let's give all all of them a slightly higher priority. And then uh, the lower ones can get a number six. And let's have a look. Yep, there is a little bit. We might get a tiny bit, but then it's going to be quite easy to fix at least. And uh, let's see, temperature is still the problem. Mealwood, 40 degrees, but they can only live up to 30. So we've got a liquid bump queued up in here. And then we're slowly building down towards here. And I'm hoping to go straight through here as well. Starvation, let's have a look what's going on. No, you're going home. That's fine. What I've also done, I am going to change the entrance 
because what I noticed here is we've got polluted oxygen and there's about 21 kilos. Now the normal pressure is around 1,500 grams, so 1.5 kilos, but this is this is about 12 times more or 13 times more that. And that's going to push down and then it's going to come into our base, but all of our deodorizers are level lower. So that's what's happening right now here as well. So let's do that. We've got access now, so let's seal you up as sinks. We have to reroute the, uh, all the pipes as well, but I think we're almost there. The tubes have been busy constructing all of this in here. So, so yeah. Okay, we can now disconnect these links, connect you up. Clean water goes in here, dirty water goes out like so, and that should be that should be good. So we can just disconnect them. And as soon as the last pipes are done, then uh, we should be all good. At least uh, that's what I'm hoping. Get these ones done as well, please. Actually, let's give you a level six because I'd like you to finish those sinks first. Okay, clean water comes in. Okay, so that's pretty good. Now we can just close or patch that up. And yeah, there we go. Beautiful. Oh, actually, we can't get out because this is in the way. If someone mines it up, then uh, that should be then all good. Filtration medium, it lets that sand in here. And a slightly high priority. How are we doing here? Okay, insulation is going to place. How is the gases looking? Very good indeed. We still don't have any mealwood growing and they're going to be very hungry. But as long as they're happy and not overcrowded, they'll still produce us a couple of eggs. Actually, talking about eggs, I do remember we had another Treco somewhere in our base. Um, now, the trick is to find him. Let's resume that. Oh, that's going to be difficult. He might also be somewhere down here. And yes, there he is. Let's bring you back to the ranch as well. And then we'll have three Drekos in there. Has there closet Drekos egg? Okay, so that makes me think that mealwood is what makes them give the Drekos egg. Sorry, the glossy Drekos egg. Uh, not so much about hydrogen, actually. Huh, okay. Well, that's uh, that's handy to know. Let's get the rest of this patched up as well. And as soon as we have, then we'll close the door in there as well. All right, so we do have this little uh, liquid loop done. And the uh, polluted water is now flowing into our system as well. So what we did, just uh, snake that granite piping around. Got a couple of gates here just to force the direction and, and always just a habit to when looping liquids or, or anything on even gases then always using a bit of a gate there to move items in. Right now they were coming in at 17 degrees which is quite high actually but we can already see it is starting to cool down most of it. Uh, we should have actually insulated this back area here as well. And you know what? Let's uh, let's do it as much as we can at least. So that way we're not gonna suck out all that heat from there. I think we're already doing it but let's have a look. Uh, the mealwood 36.8 right now. We'll let it run for a little bit and then once we come back then it should be, uh, should be a little bit cooler. But uh, what I also noticed we, all that warm water that we piped them here that's dropping directly onto our liquid pump. It would have been much nicer if we got that 7 degrees of water or the polluted water a little further away. But it's fine. It's okay for now. If we need we can always move that pump a little further back and let that liquid run into our system over here if, if we really wanted to. But uh, let's take another look. Uh, liquids are 22 degrees roughly. Temperature overlay as well. Uh, it's dropped a little bit. It's gonna take a little bit longer. Yeah. 37 right now as long as we can get another eight degrees lower then we uh, we should be able to get those meal woods going as well and you know what i think we also have some pretty hot uh, debris here so if we sweep all that out then uh, hopefully that's gonna help help us along a little bit we should probably construct a few boxes in here so it's gonna be a little bit quicker so let's do that first we'll put a couple here and then uh, last but not least uh, when it comes to harvesting make sure to disable auto harvest for those because we don't want to cut down this mealwood it's gonna be the food for our our trekkers okay so we're gonna continue tidying this up and as soon as temperature is dropped we'll check back in all right so temperature has dropped a few degrees and to be honest, it's going to take a few more cycles before it's nice and cool. But what I noticed is this area is much cooler in the, uh, well, next door. 
and we can already, well, the meal wood is already growing, so what we'll do is we'll move all those trekos over to this one instead. So that way they can start feasting on all that delicious meal wood. Um, same, we'll clean the debris at the top here as well. Okay, so we reset the uh, auto wrangle is on, max critters is zero. And this one's accepting Trekos now, so we'll wait until our rancher will come over and relocate all those Trekos into the second farm. Alright, so there we go. Temperatures are nice and low uh, low now. We've got all the mealwood on the left farm, or the ranch already growing. Couple in the right one as well, because the water, I've switched it out with, uh, with some cooler water there. And now it's looking pretty, pretty good what happened. Oh, of course. There we go. And uh, yeah, Trekos are nice and uh, happy. They're being groomed, they've got food, and uh, that's a good start for our Treko farms. Now that they are fed mealwood as well, we can see that uh, their glossy Dreklet egg chance has gone up to 16 from 2% earlier. Right, so we're gonna leave uh, this episode at this stage and in the next one we'll explore the map a little bit more as well. And I'm really hoping to put in some automation and put the actual design that I want to do. So thank you very much for watching in this episode. Hope you enjoyed and we'll see you in the next one.